you know, I've never talked about this before, but I really believe what I'm going to say is the truth. The higher your IQ, the harder it is to walk in the spirit. And so what God has to do is just knock you down a few notches, you know. Compared to God, you're everybody's dumb, you know. But every time I've ever tested, I, I score in the top 2%. Not the top 1%, but the top 2%. Now the bell curve, the bell curve is like this. And the average person, their score is like 100 or something like that. My score is always 135, 134, something like that. 133, 134, 135. So I'm in the top 2%. And I just went through the drive-thru over here and my old nature was like they couldn't figure out how to get something something so simple at the window and uh, my old nature would be like because when i was a kid i would joke with my sister i'd say she'd say something dumb and i'd just say die die and she'd get mad and throw a fit <laughs> <laughs> so i went through the drive through and they couldn't get the order right and i was like die And while I did it, I was convicted because, you know, that's the old Adam. And then I pulled out and went to the went to the uh, exit, and there were no cars. And the lady driving was like, she was just confused, and I said it again. Duh! <laughs> like, how can you be that dumb? <laughs> you know, that's, the, that's my old nature is like, how can you be that dumb, you know? common sense and apart from the Holy Spirit apart from gifts from God everybody's dumb compared to God everybody's just dumb and so it's easy to fall back in those old patterns especially if you're not self aware not at that moment self aware and you're in a hurry or something what happened with me is I did I forgot to put gas in the car and I figured I, I, I thought, well, I'm getting ready to run out of gas here in the drive-thru. It's just, I don't have a gas can. I'm gonna have to go over there and get a gas can, buy a gas, pay $20 for a gas can probably, and just get some gas. But it's like, when you're in a, uh, a when you get in a stressful situation, that's when you kind of have a tendency to fall back to the old, the old Adamic nature, you know? And those situations that arise are to remind you that when you look at somebody else, you're looking at yourself, and it might be somebody in it might be somebody who's not arrived where you are. Everybody's on the same path towards Jesus. Some people reject Jesus, but God's still calling them, you know. There will there is a time when the Holy Spirit We'll just let you go your own way. As long as you keep resisting the Holy Spirit, resisting God, resisting Jesus, resisting the truth, eventually God's going to just let you go. And it's a serious thing. Because think about it. If God gives you over to strong delusions, or if God gives you over to a reprobate mind, or if God gives you over to anything that's contrary to truth, your, your own delusions... Uh, that's that's the worst kind of thing because you're creating your own fake reality you know the witches do that the delusions no truth but it's awful strange how something like that that habit when I was a kid I would look at my sister and say doy, doy, something like that Like, instead of saying dumb, you say doy, or whatever you say, however you say it. But my point is, that's a program. The old Adam is a program, it's not who you are. And if you catch yourself going back into those programs, it's probably because you're under a stressful situation. <coughs> 
it could be lack of sleep it could be a chemical imbalance it could be you forgot to do something like I forgot to put gas in my car uh, somebody could get on your nerves so bad you just get away from them and if you can't get away from them you might go back in that old old Adam it's not who you are The Bible says to not call anybody an idiot or a fool. Call no man a fool, right? Because we're all fools until we get saved. We're all foolish until we get saved. And even then, we're still foolish to compare it to God. But he says, take on the, the nature of Christ and get the mind of Christ. And he says, you know all things. And so, if you're self-aware, see... Nothing out here really changes. I've seen this highway like, uh, let's see how many times I've seen this highway. I'm adding it up. I'm calculating how many times I've seen this highway. Six, let's see. One, let me uh, put this on pause on my calculator. I've seen this highway at least 50,000 times. I've been on this highway probably 50,000 times. Seriously, I know that sounds crazy, but it's the truth. I just added it up. I'm going all the way back to childhood, you know. And so... 30 to 50,000 times, at least probably 40,000 times. So, I forgot what I was talking about, but oh yeah, the outside never changes. I've been on this highway that many times, 40 to 50,000 times, maybe more, because doing rides here, you know. But, what does that mean? None of this really changed. What changed? Am I the same person I was way back when? No. So the outside never changes. What changes is on the inside. So no matter what situation you're in, if you change the inner man, if you change the inner man, then it's all worth it. But it's not worth it if you don't change the inner man. I mean, you can go th down this street a thousand times and never change the inner man, and it's just vanity. You can go to work, you can do your thing, go home, do whatever you're doing, your hobbies, your, your whatever it is, and you never change and become a better person. It's all vanity. You never get wisdom. You never get knowledge. You never see past this reality. You never see past the matrix. You never see the sine wave, the sin wave, the red versus blue, the black, white, and red, the he said, she said, the drama, the Jerry Springer show. If you never see past it, it's all vanity. You, you, How can you stay? The, and I've watched it. I've watched it. People sitting on the church pew for 20 years, and they're still in that legalistic, rule-based system they don't know they when you talk about talk about walking in the spirit they don't even know what you're talking about they don't even know what you're talking about and if you say hey when you look at the other person you're looking at yourself and i can prove it so i'm going down this road now look at these this traffic coming at me there this is face to face the traffic on this side and so traffic means to rub so it's like a rubbing <clears throat> traffic's coming this way as the traffic is going this way the people in this turning lane are no different than the people in that turning lane the only difference is it's a mirror image and so you're actually looking at yourself when you look over there you're looking at yourself this guy's got his music on if I was over there somebody over there probably has their music on and so you can look at the traffic going this way and this way. Traffic means to rub. And so 
when you're facing off face to face with somebody, you're rubbing, you're you're having to look at yourself and all their idiosyncrasies, all their flesh mind, their lies, their gaslighting, their future faking, their narcissism, their psychopath or sociopath. You're looking at a path that you could have took. You're looking at a path that by the grace of God you could have took the same path they were on, you know. Seriously. And if you were over there, like that lady in that girl getting ready to turn right here, if I was right in her shoes, I'd be turning just like her. So you learn by observing the mirror, the face to face. And so what conversation when you face off somebody, conversation is C O N together verse turn conversation is converse together turn and so this this experience down here is to turn you on the inside none of this really matters what matters is on the inside and as you change the inside when somebody in front of you says something stupid or does something stupid instead of saying die like, hey, are you that dumb? Realize you used to think that way. You used to be that way. Yeah, you. so you don't judge people, but you also do judge situations to keep yourself safe. So you can judge a person. If you see somebody walking down the street and you're walking down the street and they got red shoes on, be ready. But I, I promise you the hologram says if somebody has red shoes, see red has got to be on above the blue. And if they got red shoes on, it's danger. I promise you. Watch the news. The people who are committing crimes. Watch the news. They all have red shoes. And think about all the, the books about the lady in red and the wearing red shoes. You know, the harlot. Anybody wearing red shoes, you better run. they're gonna, probably going to pull a gun on you or a knife. You know, if you look at the news in the last month, there's so many people being stabbed and shot and robbed. I got a playlist. You can look on my channel. I got a playlist I started yesterday of the elder, the people, the el elderly getting robbed by these cowards, these young cowards. They're cowards because they can only rob the elderly. They're afraid to get beat down by their equals they're cowards and one of them's going to see an elderly and they're going to have a gun on them and I think one elderly person did shoot one of them when the elderly carries the gun and they pick the wrong one they're going to get shot that's 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 why I believe in the gun laws because it equalizes you know, as long as somebody's past the t where they haven't committed a crime, they're mentally stable, I think they should be able to carry a gun. Because it equalizes, you know, the women should be able to go train for, you know. If a woman can carry a gun, she equalizes with these men that might try to rape her or something. I believe in women being trained to use a gun. But anybody who has a gun needs to be mentally stable, you know. And I think they ought to go every year to carry a gun. I think they ought to go every year and do a diagnosis to have, make sure they're mentally stable. Because I've seen people who have guns, and I would I don't trust them. They just don't look mentally stable. Seriously, they say some wild stuff, and I'm thinking you got a you you got a concealed carry. What's wrong? You got a concealed carry permit, and you talk like that. It's like some of these people need a psychological test done on them. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, I really believe it's harder for somebody with a high IQ to walk in the spirit. And God, the only way, that, the only way it's possible, I think, is God has to knock them down a few notches and beat them, scourge them and beat them and knock them. Because, I mean, you can actually know, you can actually interpret the bible interpret math science engineering you could i mean 
you can look at that house and say, okay, I know how the two, I know, actually, I can look at that house, any house, and I know how the two by fours and the floor joists and the ceiling joists, I know how all that wiring's done. I can just look at that house and I know about the carpentry, the foundation, the, I mean, I see the hole. And if I can see the hole in that house and then, you know, you can almost see if I'm not a mechanic, but I could see the hole in this car. If there's a hole here, there's, there's a hole here. Even this neighborhood, you can see how the neighborhood's set up. It has a hole. So everything has parts, but it also makes up the hole. And so when the person has a high IQ, a high IQ, and they can see the parts in the hole and the hole in the parts, which is the hologram, uh, and you talk to the average person, who don't even know what you're talking about. When you say fractal hologram, it's right here. I mean, you can actually see it. I mean, look how the fence, that's like a mirror image, right? And notice the AC, that one's towards the back, this one's towards the front. You Not only do you flip it, but you flip it both ways and you get, a, you get the exact same house. And so I can go in this house, and this house is designed and set up just the same way as this house is. So I can go in this house, and I don't even need to go in this house, and I know how this one's. Now, there was an older couple here a long time ago, and I, I would crawl under the house, change their air filter, and help them. But I've been in this house when it was empty, and I walked through that whole house, and I uh, already know even the back porch is the same. It's just inverted. It's inverted this way. It's flipped this way. The front is the same in the back, but it's just flipped. But you can see the ACs are... Anyway, you probably know what I'm saying. And so you can see it in the trees. You can see the fractal hologram in the grass, in the trees, in the neighborhood, in the streets. And the lady I picked up yesterday and talked to, she's a, she's, she design, helps them set up. She's a city designer, you know. And she, we were just talking. I said, you know, about two years, I was thinking about some, these people have done a good job playing in the city, you know. the sewer system, the electrical system, the gas lines, plumbing lines, gas lines, electrical. I mean, there's a lot to a city. City planner, that's what she was. There's a lot to everything, to be honest with you. If you really, if you really just sit on the surface, you won't see it. But when you really dig down to stuff, there's a lot to uh maintaining a house maintaining a business maintaining a car maintaining and you know the average person just sitting here thinking oh i'll just get in the car and go or i'll just buy a house well what about changing the roof what about you know there's a lot to it people and if you're willing to go that far and get and learn how the whole system works you know get you a good job and move up. I don't really want to move up in the system. I really hate the system, but it gets so boring. You know, like I say, when you have, when your IQ is like in the top 2%, everything becomes boring. Everything down here is so boring. It's not even, I mean, imagine building those, that, I mean, building that little, what do you call it? chair railing over the ports the little baluster and the, the post there think about it. so you get you you get your nail gun or a screw gun and you just it's just a in series you know and notice how she stained those hers looks good but that one doesn't that guy could improve that just like she did he could improve that so much just by staining those there's a lot of work. I think this guy lives in Charlotte or out of out of state now, but so it's hard for him to maintain it. Even if you're in the same city, it's hard to maintain. I mean, you can actually see they tore up these blinds. You can see the blinds over there, they tore them up. They broke the glass right there. I mean, Just to change those blinds, fix that glass, 
by if you did it yourself it's you can it's still going to cost you if you went in that whole house change all them blinds it probably cost you three or four hundred dollars if you paid somebody probably cost you a thousand dollars it's ridiculous the inflation is ridiculous Inflation is off the roof. I took July off of ride share, but I'm getting ready to start back. But I've been, for the last year, I've been working about 55, 60 hours a week, but I did take a month off. And now it's time to get back on it. Imagine how on let's say you let's say you owned all four of these houses this one this one this one this one and you threw some people in there you'd have to get a deposit you'd have to get to know the personalities and manage them that crew and and every one of them would be have different job situations, family situations, and you'd have to deal with these people, even just four of them. You'd have to deal with each person a different way because they have different personalities. There is a commonality, yes, but each person, so let's say they all owed you on the first of every month, and this person paid on time, and they might have... Uh, write a check this person might do cash this person might do Zelle this might be paying with crypto or something and it's like this one pays on time this one pays a day late this one always trying to trying to who do you and uh, this one here you hadn't figured them out yet I mean it just it's the it's just ridiculous <laughs> And this one over here might be tearing stuff up. This one right here might be fixing stuff. This one right here might be uh, flooding the floor and you don't know it. And I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And to, to be honest with you, to, and, and, if you, and if you tell all, let's say you tell all of them, say, look, once a month or once every three months, I'm gonna come in there and inspect it. And this one's, works third shift, this one works second, this one works first, this one don't want you to go in there and you, you have to say, well, this is in the contract and they don't read the contract and they don't care. And I mean, it's just, un, it just continually, this one gets mad. Well, I don't want you in here. Well, it's my house, I'm inspecting it. I don't care if it, whether you like it or not. It's a, I gotta maintain it. And so it's like, then these, one might want to fight with you. One might want you to be your first friend. If it's a female there, she might want to marry you and date you. And if it's an uh, older person, they might be always calling you for something stupid, you know, because they're always just wanting to talk because they're lonely or whatever. I mean, it just, it just, that you could, it's just unlimited, poss unlimited possibilities of issues that you got to deal with. So imagine maintaining a whole city and being a city planner. When you deal with the older people, they're so lonely, they just want to talk to you. They create problems. Some of the times they create problems just to get you to come over and talk to them. Seriously. That's crazy right there. You would never think that. And you probably never heard that before, but I've seen it. When you do maintenance work, you see all kinds of stuff. And if you own that one, maybe they... They might be doing drugs, dealing drugs, trying to, trying to who do you? And you're sitting there thinking, well, you get ready to go because there's a lot of foot traffic. If you see a lot of foot traffic, it means they're drug dealers. I mean, it just it never ends, people. But they think they can avoid the pattern. Let's say you own that house, and you lived right here, and you saw a bunch of foot traffic, and you said, okay, 
that's a drug that's a drug house now i gotta get i gotta evict them then you go over there to evict them and they say you can't evict me because you can't prove it or something like that it's just more trouble man born of woman's full of trouble as the sparks fly upward for real